Amazing, fascinating, wonderful, gorgeous, fantastic. One of the special wines that you can find only here. Uh, the first post hole in the world. If you never try, you will never know. So yeah. <laughs> let's try the limoncello. Let's continue. <laughs> Life is perfect. <laughs> when I'm in Nemi, I like everything. <laughs> It's my favorite part of the tour. What are we going to do now? Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Hi friends, this is Rome.us and my name is Kate. Today we have a special trip to Roman Castelli, the countryside of Rome with small towns where we are going to try local delicacies. And the person who is going to help us is a professional tour guide and expert and my friend Vlad Doro. Vlad, tell us what Castelli mean and why it is a good option to visit. Hello Kate, hello guys, hello our friends. Um, I want to tell you one thing. If you haven't seen Castelli, you haven't seen nothing because the real life, the real Italy, the real Italian life is there. Once you left the city, the fuss, the noise of the big city of Rome, you will find yourself in the small little countryside. And this is what we're going to try today. The first step that we're going to make is on the most ancient road that exists on the earth and its name is the ancient Appian Way. Roman emperors that would invest a lot of money in building the roads and as you can see here the roads uh, survived after 2300 years because Romans would use the basalt stone that uh, has nothing to do with the materials that we use now. Nowadays the tarmac that people use for the highways after one season they're just broken the Appian Way survived up to 2300 years ago if you see the uneven uh, surface now uh, then believe me on the uh, during the time when it was built the stones the surface was absolutely perfectly flat just as the highway nowadays imagine that the supervisor who would come to check the road he would take off the sword and he would try to put it between the stones. If he would manage to do that, he would make the workers rebuild all the part. Imagine nowadays some supervisor would make, <laughs> would make people do the same. That's why the buildings that you find in Rome survived after more than 2000 years. But who was the main person under whom uh, the road was commissioned? Uh, the sons of Rapius. Mm. Uh, after him, it, it's the only person, not the emperor, after him the road was built, uh, was named. And uh, his name, this road, bears even today. So interesting. It was started in 312 BC, right? Exactly, exactly. Wow, you're well prepared. <laughs> <laughs> you can see now that we're in Stato della Città del Vaticano even though we find ourselves 40 kilometers from the Vatican City. Enjoy, we're gonna see the Pope's summer residence. As you can see today the weather is spoiling us because it's not hot, it's the end of August when we can enjoy perfectly the Castel Gandolfo, the small little medieval city where the Pope has built his summer residence. But the peculiarity of this place is not only the Pope's residence, but the small little thing. Kade, have a look. The two uh, very interesting things here are the Olympic circles, the Olympic rings, mm -hmm. because in 1960, Rome was holding the Summer Olympics. And here on the lake that we're gonna see later on, uh, everything that was regarding canoeing uh, was taking place. That's why on the stem of uh, Castel Gandolfo you can always find the five Olympic rings. The other peculiar thing about this place is that this is the first, uh, the first post hole in the world. Um, it was registered, if you see here, on the 23rd of November 1820. 
uh, saying that this is the first hole where people would put their correspondence. It doesn't mean that the post holes didn't exist before. No, not at all. But uh, people would be using them with complete, in a completely different way. Um, if your neighbor, if you didn't like your neighbor, you would write something bad about him. You would put here and the next day the police would come after him. So basically the first <laughs> real <laughs> letter was put here on the 23rd of November 1820. And this is the place that is uh, written in the Guinness record book. So this is a very particular thing here in Castel Gandolfo. Let's explore the city. Let's explore the city. Everyone knows Bernini because of his works on the most famous fountains. But as you can see, he also worked on small fountains and this is the example which is located in Castel Gandolfo. The first rule of a great guide is to use the word amazing, fascinating, wonderful, gorgeous, fantastic, famous. as famous. <laughs> go on, go ahead. Population. <laughs> Population. London is the capital of Great Britain. The more you use these words, the more success we will achieve. Yeah. So this is the exact reason why people come here. Not only Romans, but people from all over the world. And even Pope, for many, many years, was wondering how he could live without this wonderful scenery and this wonderful view. The fascinating thing about this lake is that once it was a volcano, the great volcano, and uh, after some time it was separated and one volcano became uh, two volcanoes, two craters, and then after the uh, lava has ended up, so the lakes have appeared here. And this is the reason why we came over. So as you can see, now we're in Castel Gandolfo, located 30 kilometers southeast of Rome, and its population is 9,000 inhabitants. It is notable because Apostolic Palace of Castel Gandolfo, which served as a papal residence, located in here. Despite the fact that it is on the territory of Castel Gandolfo, it is belonged to Vatican. And what else we can say about it? What else we can say about it? This is one of the places where people come not only to admire the wonderful scenery, but historically speaking, this is a place where the history of Rome has become. Now we are going to the secret place. From the first sight, it's just a souvenir shop, but there we will try local wine and delicacies. Because this is the city that is more than 500 years old. Come on. What do you think about the situation that we have now? <gasps> what is this? The situation is quite complicated because we want to drink some wine and I will have to drive. So for me it's even more complicated than you can even imagine. For the rest of my company it's going to be a great experience, trust me. Just look around how much wine we have here. Seems like heaven. Look how far the equipment for the winemaking uh, has developed since years. Imagine that some time ago, to simply put the core inside the bottle, you had to make a really specific procedure. If you'll come closer to me, I will show you. Look, this is the equipment, this is the small machine to put the simple cork inside the bottle. So it works this way here. The bottle is put in a special place. Come closer because you need to look over here. Look at this hole. We put the cork just inside. Okay. And now 
pulling the handle, look, the core is getting smaller and smaller. And once we push it, it goes inside the bottle. So this is how our four forefathers were putting the cork into the wine bottle. Now obviously all this uh, process is mechanized, but once upon a time it was always like this. Let's try some wine. So what we have now, this wine and bread, tell us. Oh, wine and bread. If we want to speak about the uh, uh, Italian cuisine, the most important thing is the simplicity. Italians believe that their cuisine, their food, is the tastiest in the world and they're so damn right. Because they take what nature gives, they just use some small process to bring it to the tasty condition and then they serve it. So today we're gonna uh, try, we're gonna taste the most simple things that Italian terrain gives us. Wine, bread and olive oil. Thanks to our friend Maurizio, we are gonna try the best wines that you can find here in this region. But I don't mean, uh, say in this region, I don't mean only Lazio, I mean 10-12 kilometers from the volcanic lakes because the terrain here, because the uh, soil here is very rich of the minerals because uh, this is the volcanic soil. For this reason, is uh, the wine, both white and red, are so aromatic and you are now going to try it. Let's try. I advise you to eat the bread with the, with the olive oil so you won't get <laughs> drunk very fast. <laughs> Okay, this is the simple wine. This is the simple wine, which is called the Moscato di Terracina. This is a very specific wine because uh, Moscato is the type of the grape that uh, is cultivated near the seaside. So basically the climate there is uh, quite mild and the winds that come from the, that blow from the seaside uh, make it very, very aromatic. This is one of the special wines that you can find only here from Maurizio. And this is the Pope's uh, John Paul II favorite wine. This is called Terre dei Volsci, which is uh, made here in Belletri, which is 10-12 um, kilometers from here. Um, this is a very specific wine. First of all, this is the wine that stays for more than three years um, in the wooden barrique and for this reason when you taste it you feel that uh, it's uh, very strong and you can feel the specific uh, taste of this wine. The other peculiarity is the bottle. This is called the uh, cool. broken, broken neck broken neck bottle so basically this bottle is made this way uh, to be the decanter itself so for this reason when you pour the wine into the glass, it doesn't spill. <laughs> and yes, this is the favorite wine of uh, the Pope. This is Reserva 2010. Very nice wine. Let's taste it. where in Castel Gandolfo it offers beautiful views of the Lake Albano. The panoramic view, the beauty of the lake and the surrounding countryside are spectacular. Nemi is a town located 30 kilometers southeast of Rome. It is the town of wild strawberries. You can buy it everywhere. Also, there are beautiful panoramic views. So, Kate, you wanted to ask me what we are going to do now? Yes, what we are going to do now? We are in Lake Nemi, right? And When you are in Rome, do like Romans do. When you are uh, just above the Lake Nemi, do like the citizens of this small wonderful village do. All they do from morning till the evening, they just look at this wonderful scenery and eat. Because if you ask me where should we eat, I'll tell you, let's go to Nemi, because this is the cradle, not of the Renaissance, but this is the cradle of the wonderful 
cuisine. And we're going to try salami, prosciutto, formaggi, uh, and we're going to try the wild strawberries. And all this we will try to insert in our stomachs and hopefully you will like it. You see, like the real local. Like the real local. Look at me. If you think that when you come to Rome, you will walk for 12, 13, 15 kilometers and you will burn some calories, well, you're so damn wrong. Because everything you will burn, you will gain once again in these small little shops where you will eat, 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 eat and eat. Let's go, let's try it. So, when we are talking about Naomi, the first thing that comes to our mind are mushrooms and wild strawberries. And when we speak about mushrooms and wild strawberries, the first thing that comes in our mind is... Naomi! This is obvious, so come on in! Here, you find yourself in the real kingdom of truffle, of wild berries, and everything that is related to the truffles. So come on in, I'll show you what you can get here. Come in, come in. Look over here. Our friend Giulio is the person who deals with mushrooms with all his lives. His father, his grandfather, and his grand-grandfather were doing the same. So My this son. is the fourth generation. Yes, Giulio, you are right. His son is doing the same job. So what you see here is the real artisan job. Have a look. What, Giulio, what have you prepared for us today? For me? For, for us. For us? For you, you, you prepare pappardelle. For me, everything. <laughs> for me, everything. Everything. Julia likes everything. Yeah. But uh, exactly. what do we have here? Black truffle and this cheese and truffle. Cheese and truffle. The black truffle with uh, some mushrooms. This is very hot, what Italians call picante. Yeah. Spicy. Uh, spicy, yeah. very spicy and picante because this is made of the Sicilian dried tomatoes. And this one are also the pesto made of the dried tomatoes. Here you can find everything you want, starting from cheese and finishing with the real pasta made with truffles. You can find the oil with truffles, both black truffles and white truffles. You can find even the Himalayan rose salt with truffles. So this is a really, really amazing taste. Julia, what is this, this thing here? This is, this is the balsamic vinegar with truffle. This is something that you won't commonly find in none of the shops. Kate, what is looking at you? What is calling you? What is saying, try me, taste me? Uh, something with dried tomatoes, I guess, spicy. E spicy. Yeah, let's start with it. D do you think you will be able to breathe after this spicy thing? I want to try. <laughs> try it, go <laughs> ahead. But before trying, just make sure you have a bottle of water because it's really, really hot. Spicy. Really hot, really hot. <laughs> like, like the owner of, of this shop. <laughs> <laughs> this is what I said, even the owner of this, uh, of this shop told that this is something you should try for the last. But we have the hot thing here, so she's supposed to eat the hot things. Go ahead, Kate. A bit afraid, but... Okay, okay. Come on. Look, you, you, need, you need to shoot the expression on Kate's face. Mai contradire le donne. My. Never. Okay. okay. Julia gives us advice. Never say no to women and you will be a lucky man. No, no, no. <laughs> it's Otherwise, for us men, Caput. it's finished. Caput. Caput. <laughs> <laughs> why don't you try? <laughs> Julia, why don't you try? <laughs> I'm talking about you, Vlad. Oh, no, 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 this is, not, this is not for me. It's spicy, but not that spicy that I thought. If Kate says it's like this, then I believe Kate and I eat the tomatoes, but not spicy ones. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> mm. 
Mm. Yummy. I would like to try this one. This is balsamic. Balsamic. This is a truffle. Cream. This is really delicious because you can add this balsamic vinegar to every type of dish, to the salads, to the fish, to the meat, meat. everything. Mm. Delicious. <laughs> In Italy, when you want to say that something is really tasty, you don't do it like this as I did, you do it like this. Yeah. In Italy, everybody understands that this is yummy. Buono. Buono. <laughs> but which one is your favorite? My favorite is the white truffle thing because... With cheese, right? With cheese, yes, because this is the white truffle with cheese. But also, if you are uh, really fond of the truffles, you can also find this type of product because this is the real black truffle that uh, is dried mm. and you can add it to the food. You can also find the truffle. With olive oil? Yes, with olive oil, yes. So basically, whatever dish uh, you want to cook, yeah. you see, thousands of euros are going to fall down. So here you can find even grappa, even grappa with tartufo. So this is really something that you won't find elsewhere. I mean, in terms of souvenirs, it's really original to Absolutely. bring it from Italy. Absolutely. Because you will not find it anywhere else. No, not at all. The other peculiar thing are the truffle cheeses. The small typical cheese where they add uh, around 5-7% of the truffle. And this is really tasty. It's really uh, mild, this cheese. And this is a great souvenir that you can bring. Uh, for not a lot of money, you can bring back home and everybody would just love it. If you think that truffles are not for everyone and this is something that uh, you have spent a lot of money to try, to taste, then you should know that on our excursions it's completely free. So you can try both black and white truffles and uh, this is the thing Giulio wants to say to everyone that here you can spend less money and bring home some truffles. What an opportunity! Yes, but for this bottle here that we find always here from Giulio, this is Solaya and you have the Sassicaia of the wine yard Bulgaria and this is the Antinori. This is 180 euros of a bottle, so this is <laughs> not for everyone, but you can always come and find it here. But Look, what about this one? This one here, this is not wine, this is grappa. This is grappa, the pocket size. So basically, if you want, if you're traveling, you just take this one here and when you feel cold or you feel lonely, you just take this capsule, this magic capsule. Look. There are plenty of them here. Yeah, it is, it is. And the funny thing is that uh, you have five or six different types of grappa here. So this is, let's say, sip size. You can say bite size. So let's say it's the sip size. Two sips and you are back to life again. So try it. <laughs> also nice version of souvenir. Yes, absolutely. This is the typical aperitif of the place. Look, very particular Bottega Gold Prosecco. Look, look, it's nice and fresh. When the weather is like this, 28, 29 degrees, you come here, you have uh, some nice, comfortable temperature. And have a look, we drink here in Nemi, we drink Prosecco only with wild strawberries. So this is a fantastic... Chin chin. Chin chin. Mmm, nice. Perfect. And chin chin with... Yeah, there you go.
<laughs> Vlad, so the question is, why the city is called Nemi? Nemi is an ancient name that derives from the ancient Latin, which sounds like Nemus, which means the forest. So if you have a look on the uh, land that, uh, that, that is just across the lake, you will see only the forest, you won't see the buildings there. The reason why it is so uh, is because this forest was sacred. It was a saint forest. And this was for one simple reason. Here, uh, on the shore of the lake, you can find the ruins of the ancient temple, uh, which was dedicated, which was devoted to the goddess Diana. Uh, in Greek mythology, this is the goddess whose name was uh, Artemisia. And Diana is the goddess of the hunt, the goddess of the whole uh, world of animals. For this reason, quite often, you can see the statues like this, because she's got the ark and she's got the arrows on her back. And very often you can see even the small dog or the small deer that is running just uh, close to her. So here we can see a nice example of Diana. Look how beautiful it is. And if you look from the other side, you will see both Diana and the lake. It's so beautiful here. Breathtaking <laughs> and heart melting. <laughs> and impressive. Yes. What else you can tell us about this beautiful city? The beautiful city Nemi is also famous for the ships of Caligula. And this is probably one of the most fascinating things that uh, makes this place so special. Uh, imagine the first century after Christ, Caligula, which was, uh, who was always king of this place, would build two ships, one of which will, uh, will become his residence on water and the second one will become the temple of Diana. So imagine that after his death both uh, these ships will sink, will sink just close to the shore and uh, it will take almost 2,000 years to pick them up and bring them to the surface. On the, on, yes, absolutely. Imagine that if there was no Mussolini, okay, Mussolini is the controversial figure for the Italian history, but if there was no Mussolini, the ships would be still there under the water. So basically when uh, Mussolini in the uh, 1920s will come to power, he will make the decision to bring two of these ships. And within a couple of years, the project will be accomplished. But how it will be accomplished, you will find out on our excursion. <laughs> The small village of Nemi is famous not only for the wonderful scenery and the 15th century castle uh, which belongs to the family of Ruspoli, but with these wonderful sculptures that are made uh, by the famous modern uh, sculptor whose name was, uh, is Luciano Mastro Lorenzi. So here you can find several of them. Uh, Medusa Gargona, right here, Caligula, another sculpture of Diana and uh, all of them we're going to see later on. But this is actually the fountain, the city fountain, and if you try the water that uh, runs from this, um, uh, from the hole, you will find that this is the mineral water because it's really pure and clean. I want to present you a big master, master from the capital M. Santino, because he is the student of Luciano Mastro Lorenzi and he makes wonderful things made of bronze. Come on in Thank to you. the small shop and have a look of what masterpieces he makes. Okay, I want to invite you to a very secret place, something very unusual that you won't see anywhere else. Come on in. If you think of this place, you will understand that this is the cave that has been dug 
500 years ago. So basically, 500 years ago, uh, basically poor people would use it as the uh, shelter, shelter, because here the temperature is constant. It's always 12 degrees above uh, zero. So basically during the hot summer days, you find uh, here you find uh, a really nice temperature and here in the winter you can warm up here so santino the wonderful master has made his laboratory here because if you look at the caves that you find on the sides you will see some of his works and in the end you will find the surprise wow this is the same medusa gargona Now I want to invite you, Kate, to a very particular place because this is the paradise of wild strawberries. This is a fascinating place run by the family and here you can find the most amazing gelatos, the most amazing gems and the most famous thing which brings the cues of people keen to taste this sweet because this is the tartaletta with the creme chantilly and the wild strawberries and this is just amazing so right. now let's try it so this town is unique because here you can buy and you can try their famous liquors with wild strawberries, with creamy strawberry, limoncello, with pistachio, there are a lot of different tastes. It's really good, you have to try it. And you, if you're a strong man, for strong men you have the strong grappa made of the wild strawberries. So let's try them. Let's try it. If you have been to Nemi and you haven't tried the famous uh, wild strawberry liquors, then it means that you have, haven't done anything here. I'm so. always, always ready to try. Yes, to try time. and to taste. This is the thing for, uh, this is the famous liquor okay. uh, for which a lot of people come here only for this liquor. This is made of wild strawberries and this is quite a strong guy because uh, this one here is uh, 25 degrees. So we're going to start with oh, the Oh yeah, absolutely, one. <laughs> go on ahead. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> How do you find it? It's good, it's good. It's very mild, it's very sweet. So, if you look here, I will tell you about all of them, because if we'll drink in two, mm -hmm. then I doubt that we'll walk until the car. I can imagine. Yeah, we'll stay here. <laughs> so, so, basically here we have the strawberry liquor. Okay, uh, the one is, that we tried, right? Yeah, the one that we tried. The one close to it, uh, this is the milky liquor. Like so basically creamy. the part of the alcohol is substituted with the uh, fresh cream or milk okay. so for this reason this is much milder softer and sweeter so for this reason they call it the strawberry liquor for the female for the female the, the female liquor i want to try it. yeah go on ahead you don't want to try it oh absolutely i'm a man but i will try the female liquor chin chin For me, it? in my opinion, this one is better. So I was right. It's much easier it's to female. drink it. Okay. Because the real man will decide to go for grappa. Yes. Probably. The third one, obviously you have tried before. This is the liquor that is made in Sorrento. And this is the Italian's Limoncello. most famous liquor, which... Limoncello! Yeah, no, this is Limoncello. But close to it, you will next to it, you will find the milky limoncello and this is something that you won't find everywhere so basically let's try both of them mm, let's start with the creamy one this the creamy time. one okay so we'll raise the grade okay let's go the creamy one chin chin, chin, chin. it's amazing the secret of our trip to Nemi is that uh, after all these uh, wine and liquor tastings, 
everybody is singing in the car on the way back. So this is a happy, happy excursion. Let's see what will be with me. <laughs> if you never try, you will never know. So yeah. let's try the limoncello. Let's continue. <laughs> let's continue. This is limoncello. Alla salute. For now, this one is the best. This one is the best yeah. for now, yeah. yes. Even though the motherland of uh, this liquor is Sorrento, because Italians say that uh, only the Sorrento lemons can be used for making the real limoncello, even though this one here, as you said, is number one for today. Okay, last but not the least. Pistacchio. Or least but not the last. Pistacchio, go on ahead. Pistacchio and watermelon. Yeah, watermelon. Go on. watermelon. Okay. It's something new. It's original. Of course. Chin chin. chin. It smells like bubble gum. <laughs> or maybe this one is the best. They all are tasty, but it depends on preference. After five or six liquors that you try, um, everything you're, you're is not <laughs> every, everything is the best. <laughs> so let's finish with the pistachio. Yep. And then we will make the top heat list. Okay, there Let's you go. Chin chin. chin chin. Life is good, isn't it? Life is perfect <laughs> when you are in Miami. <laughs> According to you, which one is the best? Which one is the best? My favorite one is the uh, creamy limoncello. Creamy limoncello. Creamy limoncello. Ooh, because, uh, see, the thing is that uh, for different nations, the liquors uh, mean different things. Okay. Because, uh, for example, in uh, some cultures, the liquors, uh, you can drink it the whole bottle. Mm -hmm. For Italians, this is what they call the digestivo, which means that you drink just a little, small, maybe two or three sips of it after uh, your dinner or after your supper so that makes your stomach work well mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you won't see Italians drinking two three or four of them so for this reason this one here for me the creamy one is the perfect solution it's very mild it's creamy it's tasty and it makes your stomach work so for me it's the perfect match but what about the here? one that you didn't like the one that it? I didn't like um, it's difficult to say because when I'm in Nemi, I like everything. I can imagine. I can imagine. Yes. So basically, number one. Yeah. Have a look. Look what they brought us. Wow. This this is this wild strawberry tart made of the uh, small crispy tart, okay. uh, cream chantilly, mm -hmm. and the wild strawberry. If you have a look over there, you see the queue, the uh -huh. big queue. All these people come there to eat this tart because this is the most famous thing of this place. Seriously? Absolutely. Absolutely. Let's try. Let's try. So it's my favorite part of the tour. What are we going to do now? We are going to see the biggest mortadella ever. Because if you've seen the mortadellas, you probably think it's this big, this big, this big, but it's huge and massive. Look here. This is one of the cases when size does matter. Look at this mortadella. And if you enter this small little shop, you will see about 70, 80 prosciuttos that are hung up to the ceiling because this is a very specific place. This is a very interesting place because this is the sixth generation of uh, the craftsmen because I, can't, uh, I cannot call them in any other way because these people dedicate their lives to making the prosciutto. So basically this is the family that makes them from 1870. And this six generations. Six seriously. generations, six generations, seriously. And all the salumis that you see here, they're made here. And this is the most famous place for prosciutto, salami and formaggi. I'm so curious to try. Yes. Now, in a couple of minutes, we will try most of these things. And I will tell you about all of them.
Kate, today I have a surprise for you. A lot of people who come here, they always say, this is a meat, prosciutto paradise, so I want to stay here. Today you have the exclusive possibility to become the part of the prosciutto team. Oh. So, we need to give you some equipment. Yes. In, in Italy, people who cut the prosciutto and sell them, they are called pizzicarolo. So, pizzicarolo. see, for today, you will become a pizzicarolo. Simona. I'm ready. Did I say it right? Pizzicarolo, come to us. Ciao, Simona. This, oh, this, this beautiful oh, lady, fame. this beautiful lady, Io fame, eh? makes prosciutto for last 30 years. And this is all her craftsmanship. So, Kate. Today you're gonna become pizzicarolo. <laughs> Put the gloves and prepare some prosciutto. Si, il coltello è quello. Okay. Prosciutto. Yeah. This is a real craftsmanship because the slice has to be very thin, very very thin. Like from this side. E la mano non si mette lì ma qui sopra. Okay. Uh, okay. So one of your hands is always on top. So for this, the first for the first try, it's amazing. So Kate, how much is the prosciutto? <laughs> <You wanna buy? laughs> of course I am. Here is everything is taste. Yes. We will get some Lonza, we will get some Luganiga with Tartufo. And we will get some spicy hot stuff. Seriously? Absolutely, absolutely. Not professional, <laughs> but still I managed. Time to try? I'm already trying. This is absolutely amazing. This is most, the tastiest prosciutto I've ever eaten. This is it's fucking so yummy good. in my tummy. Overall, in my opinion, if you have more than a couple of days in Rome, it is a really good idea to visit Castello Romani because of this amazing views, because you can try local delicacies as wild strawberries, formaggi, prosciutto, where else you can find it? Italy is the best place to try everything. And what do you think about it? I think that when you're in Rome, come to us and we will let you experience the real small Italy. You are always welcome. We hope you liked watching this video. Don't forget about likes and see you in the next episode.